first half, seven overall. Uh, what do you think went well today on the defensive end? Um, I think it's funny, you kind of, you look at the stats and you can find a lot of answers. Um, I thought we did a good job on ball. Um, we did a good job navigating picks. And then last time we played them, um, there were some times where we didn't slide um, and they really made us pay. So that was a point of emphasis. Well, you know, you only had yesterday and today to prepare, um, you know, knowing them helped, but they have some really good players, you know, 27s dynamic, four, five. So we wanted to make sure we helped uh, appropriately when we needed to. And I thought the guys did a good job with it. Um, but when you kind of look at it, right, you're, you're getting uh, 11 saves, only seven goals. You're getting great goalie play. Your face-off guy, you're winning 21 to 28. So those are 14 extra possessions that you don't have to defend. Um, we ride like four back, I think, in the first half. Um, and so you add up all these extra possessions that we get. And again, like it keeps our guys fresh, but it also gives us more offensive opportunities and then fewer. So, you know, you, you combine that with just good, solid defense, good goalie play. Um, you set yourself up, hopefully, for success. And again, if Luke's 50 50, um, maybe Logan doesn't see the ball in the goal, things are a little bit different. But you get all of those things, you're putting your best foot forward in all the important categories. Go to Josh and then Tony. Uh, Coach, you always talk about practicing and playing in the elements, um, and I, I think it really came in handy today with uh, Jay's weather. Um, I mean, can you just talk a bit about that? Yeah, um, <laughs> Logan's been here long enough that the guys stop asking if we're ever going inside, um, regardless of the weather. Um, so in our facilities, people kind of joke about it because a lot of people like to go inside. And um, we know that we'll have games like this, um, you know, or like when we played up at Penn State and it was like, you know, super cold. So you just kind of walk that fine line of if it's, if it's a, a, an opportunity to play in elements that aren't going to be putting these guys in, in any type of health jeopardy, then we just go out. Um, so tonight it was probably the first rain game we've had all year, but we've certainly practiced it. And, and at times you could tell both teams kind of struggled a little bit. There was some exchanges and some shots that were a little bit more difficult. Um, but those are kind of the games you just kind of got to grind out. Um, and you got to live with some of those turnovers. Uh, but then going back to some of the hustle plays, and I thought we got so many of those hustle plays in the first half where we'd lose a face off or they'd get a stop, but then we rode it back. Um, and it just kind of helped make up for some of those mistakes that you know you're going to get. And we just want our kids to stay positive and like don't get frustrated. Uh, just keep playing and playing. Um, and obviously, when we have a lot of smart players, um, those guys are really good at making those adjustments and, and being able to have that poise in the moment. I'm Wayne Viner from Viner Four Gates. We make your company work. I'm Arthur Smith with Viner Four Gates. Two-factor authentication is a must-have in today's world. Security training for your company is a must. The crooks are getting smarter. We have to give you the edge to fight back. Logan, they. Uh... They looked a lot different this week, this game, when you guys played them. They were sliding super early, not packing in as much behind. Um, how long did it take you guys to adjust? And and what do you think the key to, to kind of cracking that defense was today? Yeah, I mean, playing them the second time around, you know, they were a lot more buttoned up and stuff. You know, we talked with Coach Benson after the game. You know, we didn't play our best game today. And we all know that. We're going to watch the film. And we're going to fix some stuff moving forward, going in the first round of the playoffs. So. We got some stuff to work on for sure. Yeah, uh, Logan and Coach, first half, uh, shooting percentage was down a little bit. Uh, is that, was there problems or is that because uh, Kirst is just a great goalie and is in the right spot and everything? I thought he really kept them in the game in the first half. I, you know, in, in games like this, the guys are fired up. You know, it's a championship game and the guys are excited. Um, and so you're trying to manage that. And I felt like early on, um, we, we, we were moving the ball pretty well. I think we were kind of looking for the first opportunity at times where like we were, you know, guys would cut and they were kind of open and we'd throw it. And then we settled for maybe like the first shot. Um, maybe not always the best shot. To your point, you know, curse is so good that if you, if you don't get somewhere towards the middle of the field, there's just not a lot to shoot at. And he takes up a lot of goal and he's super instinctive. So um, felt like we just maybe, you know, cause our guys do such a good job of moving and cutting and, and changing fields. When we do that out of the flow, that's I, I think that when they're at their best. Um, but again, at times it's, 
it's hard to play that way against good defenses that pressure you um, and guys that you know you have a tough time getting leverage on and they're super athletic and they're very old at that end um, so at times we just couldn't get into that flow um, but again when we did I thought the guys did a good job I thought we did a good job in transition um, you know we got some really good opportunities going from defense to offense for sure uh, yeah, Coach Anthony DeMeo hadn't knocked on that Patrick all season, knocked on yesterday and today. He's kind of scored in every single way. He seems to find his team for me now. What is it like to see him step up and what will be you know, the, those last couple of weeks of this? Yeah, I think uh, what's been great about Anthony is he's scored a lot of different ways and, and shooting a lot of different ways. Um, he, you know, he's kind of been a guy that, you know, a low release a lot. Um, the other night, a lot of high releases, some low lows today. Um, you know, then he, he kind of changed it, went back to low to high. So I think he's done a really good job of keeping the goalie guessing. Um, and the more release pet points that you have and the different ways you can shoot, it's really hard to kind of get a sense of, all right, what shot is coming and where is he going to put it? And I think he's really done a really good job there. Logan, you talked about how you guys still had stuff to work on. And it seemed like after the game, the celebration was a little bit shorter than usual. Did you kind of feel like, how do you, how do you kind of balance wanting to celebrate today's accomplishment, but knowing that there's more ahead to you guys? I mean, yeah, this was just a box we check. You know, we want to ultimately get the main thing. We're keeping the main thing the main thing. And that, that's how we're doing our business and stuff. So we're going to you know, see what happens tomorrow and kind of move from there. What is the main thing? Uh, winning the championship. And then uh, the first guy to get the trophy was Drew Morris. What's the significance behind that? Oh, Drew's awesome. You know, he's a great leader, you know, great senior. Um, you know, I, I think coaches like us too would be, you know, super confident with him going in the goal whenever he, uh, if Logan were to go down, knock on wood, I don't think he will. But, you know, if, if Drew has to go in there, I think everyone's confident. You know, Drew's an awesome player. You know, he's, he's a really good leader as well, and he's a great person. So if you, if you watch Drew during the week, how he prepares, how he practices, um, how he challenges everybody, you would think he's our starter. And a lot of times when you're not the starter, sometimes you change your approach. You never know that. And I think that's why everybody loves Drew and everybody respects him. Um, he is like the first guy to practice, last guy to leave, um, cares so much about the team, always puts the team first. So I think it was very fitting. Um, and the guys just set him up there. Um, so for a guy like that who's getting his, his, his masters or his, his one year um, specialty masters like and for the guys to send him up there just shows how much the guys love him and how much we all love him. Do Wayne and Emily. Um, this is for Logan. The play, you, you start to take the play to Rutgers or several times you cut into the middle. There's a lot of contact physicality. Talk about uh, what that means to you as a scorer, being able to take the ball to them, and how physical was it out there tonight? I mean, yeah, it was physical. You know, the second time around, they, they kind of like had an idea what we were doing at some points, and you know, we just had to make them work and stuff. You know, the second, third, fourth opportunity and stuff, just not taking that first opportunity, and uh, just kind of working the cut and stuff, and just uh, making them work. So, um, for Coach, you mentioned Luke's development, and I know it's one piece of the puzzle, but how much of that? has enabled you guys to get here and just to see him do it on a kind of big stage with a bigger stage coming. I mean, we, we kind of talked about it and with some different people just this week. I mean, what he's done, you know, he, he took, I didn't look at the stats of how many faceoffs he took as a freshman, but not many. And then last year, um, kind of as the year went on, he became this really good complimentary piece with Justin. And we had like a two headed monster there, but we were still like 47% last year. And now you're looking at this year at points, he's been 20 points better. And you think about 20 extra percentage points, 67 points, and or 67%, you're getting two out of every three. And not only are you getting those possessions, you're getting transition. Um, there's a reason why the offense does that well and the defense doesn't have to play as much. Um, it's incredible. And I think Luke would tell you it's the guys he practices against because he's a very humble guy. And he'd also give a lot of like support to his wing guys. And, and we are getting great wing play. Guys like Roman and John Geppert and Bubba and Higgs and Owen Probilski, those guys are terrific. Um, and Carol Kennedy does a great job with those guys, just coaching them up. Um, so again, that, that it makes you look a lot better when you're just getting the ball that much more. I mean, it, it is what it is. Um, and again, you know, last year we were trying to get to 50% and now 
if we're 50%, we're disappointed, right? So again, give Luke a lot of credit, you know, and all the guys that have pushed and challenged him. Hi, I'm Maryland wide receiver Rakim Jarrett. If you've been hurt in a car crash, people will tell you you need a lawyer. My mom says you need my lawyer, the Jack Litch Law Group. At 855-BIG-DOG-1. Don't just get a lawyer. Get, get the, the lawyers. lawyers. If you're hurt, listen to my mom and bite back with the big dogs. Do add and close it out with Kevin. John, what's, what's the sense of accomplishment in winning the regular season and tournament championships so convincingly? Um, and, and I think Logan, obviously, you know, for, for those guys, I love that they're so focused on, you know, that one. Um, as an older guy, um, you know, the, there's a lot of things I think are really important to our program, um, really important to our school. Um, so to be able to represent our school and win a Big Ten championship means a lot. Um, you know, lacrosse means so much in this area. Um, and we have so much great tradition here and so many people that care so much. Um, we take a lot of pride in trying to go out and make sure that we represent well. Um, and then obviously to win the tournament um, is hard. You know, you're trying to play two games in three days. Um, you know, when you win the first time, um, you, you, there's some satisfaction in that, but trying to beat a team like Rutgers twice or Hopkins twice, you know, it's harder, right? Because you don't have that edge of, you know, like when, when you lose the first game, you can put that chip on your shoulder. Um, and a lot of times that's, as a coach, you kind of like that disposition. Um, so to try to do it again with some of the things people are doing, you're trying to anticipate some of those things. Um, it is challenging, um, but these guys have done a great job. Um, but it is really important. Um, the conference regular season, the tournament, um, certainly there are other things that we're excited about, um, but we want to make sure we check as many boxes as we can because it's hard, and, and you're not going to do it every year. Um, you're going to try. Um, and some years, like this year, where we have so much more experience, um, it's certainly a much more helpful when we stay pretty healthy. Um, so, you know, you got to have to, you kind of have to enjoy it while you have it. Um, but, you know, again, proud of our guys because it does mean a lot. Kevin, John's apologies if this is hard to ask, but just piggybacking you know, off Luke coming off his season low and face off percentage against uh, Hopkins in the semis. Just what was his mood like after that game? And was he beating himself up or? Uh, it would have been so dominant this season over the last year just uh, to come out and do it against that. Yeah, and, and it kind of worked in our favor, and I was hoping it would. Um, you know, we walked out of Thursday, Luke was not happy. And he, and he turned that into, we kind of talked about chip on your shoulder. Like, he was displeased, and he was super motivated. And he wanted to come out and respond and respond well. There was no feeling for, sorry for himself. Like he was a man on a mission. And, and that's what you hope in athletics. You're teaching young people, not only in sports, but in life. Like, okay, it didn't go the way you wanted. So how are we going to change that? So the last 40 hours, those guys did a great job watching their film. Uh, we didn't do it a whole lot physically. We were smart about, we just, they used four guys last time, which kind of helped us so that anybody they rolled out, Luke kind of knew what they were doing and actually threw 29 out today um, as a poll. So he, he basically has seen everybody, but he kind of knew what to expect, but he was laser focused. Um, if he goes 65%, maybe he comes in feeling good. So um, again, handling it the right way, right? Teaching people, these young folks about life, that's exactly what you're hoping. And that's something we'll talk about to the team on Monday is, hey, you're going to have your good moments and bad moments. It's how you respond. And Luke showed all the young guys, like, this is how you do your business if you want to be successful. Awesome. Thank you, everyone.